Hello everyone, this is Nicole. Thank you so much for stopping by. Today I have a brand new video tutorial to share with you this week. And this week we're going to create a fun and simple watercolored card using String Daisy Stem Set from Altenew. I am taking out two solid images from the set and we will create a watercolor background first for the card. So we are going to ink up the solid images using the weathered wood distressed inks. I have my mini inks over here and you are going to ink up the surface of the stamp and then you're going to stamp it off on the scratch paper first and then without re-inking it you're going to take that leftover ink right onto our project to create a light impression. They call this a second generation stamping and I'll share another project next week using this similar technique so you can get more variations out of it. So this one is a really light gray background so I really wanted to bring out some gray and create like a watercolor wallpaper style. So after these are all stamped I'll be taking out some clean water because with the distress inks you can lift up some of the colors to make it really nice wash for the background. So I spritz clean water using some sprayer and I am picking up some of the colors with my clean tissue and you can see that the color is getting lighter and lighter and once it dries it'll even dry a little bit more lighter too and softer. So this will be a perfect background for our card for today. So for the focal point of the card, I am using big outline image from the set. This is outline for the biggest flower from the set and I'm inking it with Versafine Honest Black Ink. And this is perfect for watercoloring because Versafine Onyx Black Ink is waterproof and it captures the fine details of any outlines and sentiments really wonderful. So I'm going to take one large image outline and then another small image and then stamp that twice onto a watercolor paper. The watercolor paper I am using is Tim Holtz Watercolor Distress watercolor cardstock and I use the same one for the background that we did earlier for the card as well. I am using a textured side because I love the texture showing off when I'm done with the piece and when it dries you can see the texture even better so it adds a little bit of dimensions and interest to the card in my opinion but if you want a softer result just flip it and you will have the softer side of the distress watercolor paper. I love this paper because it's really bright white and it matches my card base really well and it helps the colors really pop out in my opinion. So you are going to add some a shading of the color of your choice. I chose blue because who can go wrong with blue, right? And I love blue. Anything blue is just my favorite. So I am using Shinhan watercolor uh, tubes that I tested and I shared my thoughts on earlier last week in a video. I will link that below if you want to check that out. But I'm going to use the same color, but I am just adding layers on top of each other. And with the shading, I am not doing too much thought about it obviously or not giving any thoughts actually I'm just having fun shading um, each petal if you want to be technical obviously you can give more thoughts about it like direction of the light that's hitting and so and so forth but I just wanted to have fun so if you don't want to worry about it have fun with it so I added some some of the blue colors over there and for the smaller flowers I will add a purple colors on top of each other so once this dries it'll dry really soft so if you want a softer look make sure you add a little bit of color if you want an intense look you can layer it on top of each other once it's dried the quick tip when it comes to water coloring is make sure you let let it dry for a little bit and then come back to it and then you can fiddle with it more if you are not happy with it but really when it dries it dries much more softer so if you want a softer effect I think not fiddling with it too much when it's wet and when you're adding color is the key so just walk away go grab a tea relax a little bit and then come back and see if you like the results if you don't then you can always add more layers of color on top of each other so after those are cut out using the coordinating dies, I'm going to assemble the cards together. The card base I am using Nina Solo White 110 pound card stock and I am using B Creative Tape. This is a really good sticky tape and I love using this for any heat 
embossed or watercolored piece for my cards. I'm going to attach my background card piece right on top of the card base using Be Creative Tapes. And for the cutout flowers, I am using foam dots. And I am placing three of them kind of on the right side, towards the right side of the card base as a focal point. And I did decide where I want this eventually, but after I took out the sentiment set, I changed my mind, which you will see over here. But let's go ahead and continue to watch my initial process of placing this. I love overlapping flowers together. I just think it's just fun. So for sentiments, you will see over here, I am using Acts of Kindness stem set from Hero Arts. And I love this stem set. It has a really thoughtful and very warm sentiments. And since the bottom of the card base didn't have enough space, I decided to lift off my big daisy watercolor piece over here. And then I'm going to move up just a bit. So this foam dot doesn't really get stick to it right away. So I do have a little bit of flexibility to move things around. But if you're using a really strong foam tapes, uh, make sure to place it before you put sentiment. So don't do what I do, basically. All right, so let's go ahead and move up our flowers a little bit above. So you can see that I am still making it overlap just a little bit. I just think that um, having a little bit of overlap between flowers is more fun, in my opinion. All right, so I'm going to choose one of the stamp set or one of the greetings from the set. I love the warm sentiments that the Acts of Kindness stamp set has. So I'm going to ink one of them up using the Midnight Violet ink pad from Altenew. It's a nice purple dark shade and I thought it would match our smaller flowers perfectly. So as you can see, the card is coming together. Just one last finishing touch. I will be adding a little bit of shimmer onto our cutout flower. And this is a clear glitter sparkly pen from Crafter's Companion. I think this one is much better than Wink of Stella in my opinion. Well, first because the price point is amazing. You can get three in one set and it lasts really long time and it has tons of shimmer. So if you want lots of shimmer, try this pen if you haven't done so. So I'm going to add lots of sparkles on a small flower and big flowers. And after that, I wanted to add a little bit more color onto it. So I'm taking Hickory Smoke Spray uh, from Distress Ink and I'm just taking the nozzle out and splattering on top of the card base. I cover the spring daisy um, piece so that it doesn't touch it. But as you can see, it has a nice uh, splatter on the background. So it adds a great interest in my opinion. So that is it for today's card. You can see the sparkle when I'm um, going against the light. So I'll make sure to capture that on a picture so you can see it more up close. If you are interested in products that I used in today's video, make sure to click the description link up, uh, below the video. And also you can go to my blog and on the bottom of the blog post for today, there is a full supplies list. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, make sure to subscribe. I would love to have you as my subscriber. Thank you so much for joining me and I will catch you next time with a brand new video tutorial. Bye-bye.